Hello, this is Cuckoo. Today, I'm really excited because I'm going to show you how to set up your own custom layout for the Array Touch by Embodement. It's a MIDI controller that looks like this. It's really cool. Have you ever seen such a special looking MIDI controller? You can create your own custom layouts and this is the one that I'm going to show you how to set up. It's a controller for uh, the analog rhythm today. And as you can see, I don't have to tap it very hard to, to interact with it, but I can. I can even switch to this layout here that I also created and hit it with a drumstick. As you can hear, it's so incredibly fast and that's really cool. So now I can play this uh, analog rhythm with drumsticks. How cool is that? So I'm going to show you how to build this custom layout and uh, then you can see for yourself if this is something that piques your interest. And if it does, if you want this for yourself, you can go to Embodement's website and uh, put in a little co coupon code that you can find in the description below. It's going to give you 10% discount and it's going to give me a little share of uh, an affiliate share. Yeah. So it's win-win for both of us. <laughs> yeah, in, in any case, I think you find it very interesting when you see how you interact with the software and the hardware and how you set it up because it's really, really sleek. Let's get to it. All right, so here we are, the Array Touch, just waiting to be powered on like that. It's ready to go, really fast boot of sequence, and it's ready to go, spitting out MIDI. Where's the MIDI going? Straight to the analog rhythm turn it on and what I'm going to attempt to do today is to create a setup uh, for the array touch and to play the analog rhythm from the array touch there's many ways to do that because you can set this up to look and behave in any way you want right now it's just in the preset state nice you can play it already nice media channel one I reckon and what I can actually do, even without the editor, is to change some aspects of the layout on the device itself. So for instance, press the keyboard and say, well, what about playing the keyboard on channel six instead? Now it's playing on MIDI channel one. Well, the last pressed element on the screen, whether it's this, this, or this, the last pressed element will respond to a long press here and now you can set it up. Middle channel two, three, four, five, six. All right, let's go. So now this one is playing on middle channel six instead. And I think we've reached kind of the highest point of the keyboard on that one. So how about turning the octave down? Just press the minus key there. So already any layout that you load, you can start messing it up. Let's try some other layouts here. Layout two. It appears to be MIDI channel 2 and MIDI channel 3. Change the octave, long press, change the channel, MIDI channel, uh, how about channel 7? Nice. So let's check out another layout, layout 6. Yeah, cool. There's some very advanced layouts too, like layout number 9, for instance. It's a full bone sequencing machine. You can, yeah, you can put up notes and, and stuff and, and sequence a whole media orchestra. Cool, I'm not gonna do that today. That's for another day. But you can run multiple sequencers at the same time. That's quite remarkable, actually. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head into the editor and start making something from scratch entirely. So let's do just that. So over here on the computer, I'm gonna open Array Lab and this is now connected through USB to the computer and you can preview stuff in real time. So when I press this little button here, I'm previewing uh, whatever I'm doing here on the work surface in real time, which is really, really cool. It's like a one-to-one -one experience. So in this case, what I want to do is to have all of these, all of the pads available on the surface. And then I want a keyboard also to play a selected instrument on a keyboard. So let's try to do that. So here we can see we've got key, key grid, keyboard, drum pad, fader, um, fader 2D, uh, live pad sequencer, button, 
and API zone. The API zone is a little bit beyond me, but what it is is you can effectively create your own uh, custom solutions that only you can dream up uh, within the API zone. But you need some programming abilities for doing that and a little bit more research than what I've done here. So I'm more of a drag and drop kind of guy, so <laughs> let's, let's do this. So I'm thinking, let's start out with a keyboard because that seemed a lot of fun. I'm going to take the keyboard here, drag it out. I want to go a little keyboard. You can see it instantly up here. Yeah, the keyboard is right there, ready to be played. Yeah, it's a small keyboard, but it is a keyboard. Let's extend the range a bit. There we go. I think that's as far as the range goes. You can actually also change the, the height of it. So maybe I'll be happy with a very low profile like that. Let's put it right there. Cool. Yeah. On the side here, we can see uh, which channel it's currently emitting on. MIDI channel 8. How about MIDI channel 1? Should be the kick drum. Yeah. How about MIDI channel 9? Should be the hi-hat. We could hear that it was immediately sharp, but somehow it lost the sharpness. It got muffled. There is after touch, there is X and Y controls on each key if you want it. And by default, I think all of these things are turned on. So I think the Y axis, let's see here, is actually controlling the filter. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off these things just to make it very simple and non-destructive. So let's do that. We we'll see here we've got pressure. I'm going to turn off pressure. We've got glissando. It's, let's turn it off got vibrato. I'm going to turn it off too. There's more hidden down below the pressure. X relative and Y relative. Y relative is currently on. I'm going to turn it off. Let's see. Yeah, so now I've turned off the Y axis relative value that was ha happened to send a value that corresponded to the frequency of the filter. Now it's off. Okay, we've got a keyboard and it's working, but currently we need to set the the desired MIDI channel. But I was thinking, how about we select the MIDI channel here and then we just play the active track. There is a nice way to do that. And in uh, the settings here on the analog series, and I believe most of the Electron series, uh, there is a MIDI config, a port config, and a channels config. In the channels config, we can set up which MIDI channel every track is going to respond to. So right now it's got like the number here is corresponding to the MIDI channel, very logical. But then last, there is something called the auto channel. And the auto channel is the channel where it's taking the MIDI data coming in into that channel and applying that onto the selected track. So if we, instead of sending something directly to the desired track, we send it to the auto channel, which is currently 14, Let's try and do that, see what happens. So this module here, channel 14. Yeah, now we're playing there. Select this one. Cool. And the reason why sometimes you can't play in the whole register of the keyboard is that the limitations of the certain uh, sound engines on like this, for instance, comes to a point where it just simply doesn't play any higher than that. And that is just because of the, the way the sound engines work. Yeah, so this could be really cool, for instance, for a bass line. Filter. Maybe a little. Cool. How about that? Sounds pretty awesome. Yeah, so now we've got that working. Nice. Next up, I want to create a couple of pads over here. So I was thinking maybe we should just start out by cre recreating this and have like a finger tapping area. So let's do that. So in the app, I'm going to take uh, the key. Let's see if that is a good place to start. There's a key. And 
Same thing there. I think I'm going to start by turning off all the glides and all the aftertouch and stuff. Uh, just to begin with, to have control. Wire relative off, pressure off, vibrato off, pressure, ABS. Yeah, all of that is off. Let's play the kick drum. We set it to channel no one, root note C, octave three. Let's see what happens. Ooh. Nice, works. If I keep this press, no, nothing weird happens. There is a cool thing you can do. On the second tab here, it's called style. You can customize the colors and the style and some animation, which I think is pretty cool. So let's go and check it out. So we've got a couple of different looks that you can choose from. Edge color is the current uh, style. It's got an edge color and another color in the middle. There is linear gradient, which is uh, also very nice. There is circular gradient. Uh, maybe it's a little bit too dark there. Let's change the color to something brighter. There you go. Going from a one color to a second color. It could be anything you like. We've got rectangular. Well, the uh, same thing applies there. Maybe we see it if we uh, see it better if we kind of make it bigger like that. And then we've got solid color, which is just just a color. So I'm I like um, edge color. You can set up stuff here, like brightness, for instance. If I set the brightness to a positive value, it's dark now, but it turns bright as I press it. And if I set the brightness to negative, it turns dark when I press it. And we've got a duration there if we want it to linger a little bit more. Maybe that's cooler with a positive value. Or if I want it short and snappy. I think I'm going to go for something bright that turns dark. Yeah, nice. And below here, you've got something called finger animation. Let's see it. Click, slide, release. Yeah, they're all disabled now. So click. How about a glow when we click? Let's see what happens. Yeah, we can see a little glowing mark right there when I pressed it. That's nice. How about a ripple? Nice, it's like a circle. And with the ripple, I can set the ripple to be a color that I want. Or I can inherit the color from the actual element. I'll set it to white for now. How about slowing it down? Ooh, that's going to be crazy. How about two? Yeah, three. Yeah, I, I like it fast like that. Cool. I'm going to duplicate this by pressing this button there. We can see that I kind of misjudged the size here a little bit. So either I have to shrink the keyboard, which actually might be a good idea. Like that. Now I can fit it in right below each other. Yeah. And we can see now these are actually the exact same button with the same settings and the same MIDI note. So if I press this, this one on top, the other one it activates as well because it knows that it's actually the same MIDI note. So if I set this now to be a, a different note, channel two, let's go. Well, maybe I should have them the other way around. Put it there, the other one there. This is so nice to be able to do this, to do a roll, is incredible. Yeah, it's very fast, very responsive. Now, in terms of style, I think I'd like to have kind of alternating uh, styles to, to make it nice. So I think this one, I'm going to go to the style there, go to background. And then have the background color and then go to the edge there and make it black. So, and in my head, sometimes I give uh, certain sounds a color. This is a kind of bright orange yellow color to me. 
So I'm going to turn this to a bright yellow orange. Let's see, something like there. And maybe the kick drum, I'm not sure. That could be like a, a kind of dark, full blood brown. Is that a word? Rusty brown. Okay, I'm going to give it a rusty brown color. Is that even possible? Not really, maybe. Okay. Fair enough. That's going to be my kick drum color. So, yeah, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to duplicate this. And let's go. It's all about creating a, a layout that makes sense for you. Let's just, to begin with, start to mimic the layout here. So, I'm just going to keep doing the exact same thing here. And uh, so, it's going to fo fast forward a little bit, probably, in the editing. Yeah, let's, let's go. Channel 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, let's try it. Yeah, feels extremely familiar in terms of the layout. A little bit larger, as you can see. Uh, but that works really well. And at the same time, you can select one there. Maybe that one is the one. Cool. I'm just going to have to set the colors, right? Let's see. Snare drum. Ooh, something like that. Cool. So that's my, that's my color scheme. Cool. Yeah. One really cool feature on the Array Touch is that there is this Alt button here. If I press it, every layout has, in fact, two layouts. So I can go to the alternate alternate layout by pressing Alt. And I was thinking that the main layout, <laughs> that the main layout could be uh, the finger layout, whereas the Alt layout could be the drumstick layout. Yeah, because what's so cool with this array touch is that if you're using uh, drumsticks. It's extremely responsive, extremely fast. Like, if you really challenge it, like, you can hear that the faster I go, The, the faster you go, uh, it keeps up, it keeps up, which is, an, uh, you know, it's really cool. So let's explore how to create an alternate page. Let's do it. So let's first of all, just copy all of those. Copy. Now, where's the alternate? <laughs> Nearly didn't see it. Alternate, so there we go. Gonna paste this. So I was thinking we're gonna go with, um, Something that is more designed for drums. We're going to feel it out and see what size is actually. Uh, this feels like a good size. So how about, that's the snare drum, right? I'm just going to move everything to the side for now. So I was thinking snare drum. How about this? Yeah, works really well. I'm surprised at how well it works. Like this, open hi-hat. Right, let's see. Cool, I feel like ready. I feel, yeah, I feel like we're ready. This one turned out really nice. And then we got the alternate side here. Doesn't look really cool, but I think I like it. It works well. I'm gonna, I'm gonna practice, I promise. I'm gonna practice on the drums. Maybe one day I could be as good as this guy. Martin Hundtvedt, who is uh, an excellent drummer, happened to be one of my studio neighbors and friends. So what I do now when, when the layout is ready is that I push it to the unit. There's a button here. It says pull, it says push. I'm going to push this to the unit. Saving. 
and let's see I'm waiting for it to be saved there we go so now when I go here I choose layout one is right there cool now it's time to play right now it's really time to to make use of it so let's head to new pattern shall we one thing that when you now start to make music and and use this in with your devices is that since this has uh, an onboard sequencer the onboard sequencer is spitting out midi sync it's a midi clock so right now i think this is set to receive a midi clock and maybe if i change it it won't it won't actually change the midi clock because it's coming in there you can see midi midi clock so uh, if you don't want to use that you need to either remove sync from the from the setup or uh, go into the settings here let's see midi config sync clock receive no no clock receive and uh, tempo now we can set the tempo to whatever we want i am in no way uh, a drummer but now that we have drum a drum layout i can use the drumsticks to actually sequence the analog rhythm which is a uh, kind of a dream come true so let's go and rec mode is now quantized so it's going to correct all my mistakes actually i'm going to do a pre-roll two bars oops and raise the volume of the click track a little bit and get ready so Thank you Quantizing for doing such a good job. Some claps. Bring up the tempo. Delay time. There you go. Uh, yeah, yeah. So the array touch is something that is very easily customizable. And you can customize it to become your friend in your everyday setup. And I'm going to do um, maybe another video specifically on the internal sequencer because I, I think that is really, really impressive. Uh, but that is for uh, another video. I hope you enjoy this. If you uh, enjoy the stuff that I'm doing here, please consider throwing in some donation over at Patreon. I appreciate that very much. And if this suits your needs, if you're interested in the Array Touch for yourself, check out the links in the descriptions for affiliate links. And also I might have a little coupon code for you, as I told you in the beginning. Peace out, everyone. I hope you enjoy 
the stuff that I'm doing here on YouTube. Please subscribe, like the stuff, comment below, all this jazz, because that makes me happy. Peace out, everyone. Thank you.